Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to work through the Azure portal to create a container in Azure Storage. And then what we're going to do is upload and download some blob data within the container that we create. As you can see here, we have my dashboard here already set up and we have a storage account already provisioned. To use blob storage, what we need to do is create a container through the portal. So to do that, we're going to open up our storage account here. And down here under services, we have a couple different options. We have blobs, files, queues, and tables. What we're going to do is select the blob service. And then what we'll do here is create a container. Now what we need to do is give our container a name and specify the access level or the public access level, I should say. The name for our container has to be lowercase and must start with a letter or number and only include letters, numbers, or hyphens. What we'll do here is we'll call it my AZ103 blob. Now, after we've given our container a name, we need to choose our public access level. You can see here we have private, blob, or container. And the three options are pretty self-explanatory. Setting the access level to private prevents any kind of anonymous access, while setting it to blob allows for anonymous read access for blobs only. Setting the public access level to container access allows anonymous read access for containers and blobs. We're going to leave our public access level set to private here. And then what we'll do here is we'll click OK. Now keep in mind that the default level of access for a blob container is private or no anonymous access. So now that we have our blob container provisioned, let's go ahead and upload some data. What we're going to do here is upload a block blob. Now a block blob, for the most part, is ideal for storing text and binary data up in the cloud. Um, you'll store things like files, images, and videos. So to upload our block blob, what we're going to do is navigate to our new container here. And we can see here there are obviously no blobs found. So to upload our block blob, we simply click the upload button here in the top navigation. And then from here, we can browse our computer for the information that we want to upload. So let's go ahead and select some text files and an image as well. That, by the way, is my Azure PowerShell Quick Start Guide published with Packet Publishing. So we'll go ahead and open these. And we can check the box here to overwrite any pre-existing files if there are any name conflicts. Now under the advanced drop down here, we can see there's some other information we can supply if necessary. We can specify the authentication type to use for uploading blobs. We can actually use RBAC to control this. We can also use an account key. We can also see the blob type we have block blob, page blob, and append blob. If we hover over the icon here, we can see that once a blob has been created, you can't change the type. Remember, we're uploading a block blob. And if we were uploading a VHD file, we could check the box here to ensure that VHD files come up as page blobs, which is the recommended configuration. We're not uploading a VHD, so it doesn't matter one way or the other here. And then we can specify the block size. We don't have any folders here, so we'll leave this alone. And again, these are advanced settings that don't need to be set. So we'll go ahead and upload our blob. And we see we get our notifications here, and then we see our files show up in our blob container. So now that we've uploaded some data into our blob container, let's go ahead and download a block blob. As you could probably guess, it's not going to be terribly difficult. To download a block blob, we simply right click on the block blob we're interested in and select download. And then we can download the file. Now, if you noticed, if we right click on here, we have some other options. We have some blob property information we can look at, which includes an overview of that particular block blob, along with the access tier gives you some size, some server encrypted information. We can also view any snapshots of that block blob. We don't have any. We could create a snapshot here. And now we have a snapshot of our block blob. 
we can edit our blob and we can generate a SAS or a shared access signature. This shared access signature is a URI that grants access to this blob in this particular case. And what we could do here is create it here. And if we copy this into our browser here, we could access our block blob securely using the shared access signature, which is signed by using the signing key. So now let's bounce back out to my blob container here. So there you have it. You now know how to create a blob container. You know how to upload block blobs to your container. And you know how to download block blobs from your container. You also know how to view its properties, create a snapshot, and then even generate a shared access signature to grant access to the uploaded block blob.